Welcome to Hannah's Heart. So Hannah, she's just one of the women who did struggle with infertility in the Bible. No matter who we are, we can be inspired by the fact that Hannah took her pain to God and God heard her and was with her. So when she was praying at the temple, she had been weeping and not eating and her lips were moving, but her eyes were closed and the priest was like, why are you drunk at the temple? Because <laughs> yeah. it can become an obsession when you want Wanting a child so deeply. And desiring that baby and to be a mama. Every holiday, every Mother's Day. This is not a show that's going to promise you a certain outcome. Mm-hmm. But this is a show that says, however God answers your cry, we know that He's enough. Hey, I'm Ann. And I'm Kendra. And you're listening to Hannah's Heart on American Family Radio. We're glad to have you here. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And then really anywhere you look for a podcast. And then um, you can send us emails of questions or topics that you want us to cover. And prayer requests at Hannah's Heart at AFA.net. Well, spring has sprung. Yes. We have Easter right around the corner, as well as Infertility Awareness Week is coming right, up. Right. Um, you know, when everything is in bloom and all the little birdies and ducklings are popping out, something about it just makes it a little extra hard when it you're does. struggling to start your family. And even just like the thought of wanting to put Easter baskets together mm-hmm. and all of the future traditions that yeah. you may want to do with Get your family. Get the cute clothes out. Yes, yeah. can be extra tough. So please know that we're... We're praying for you, and yeah. God sees you in this season. You are 100% not alone. Right. Um, today, we have an excellent guest that we want to bring on the show. Her name is Kelly, and she is the founder of Waiting in Hope Ministries. And you guys, I cannot stress enough the importance of community when you are struggling with infertility or miscarriage. Um, it's something that, you know, when Ann and I found each other in the middle of our journeys, um, it was life-giving mm-hmm. to know that there's someone else who understands and right. will point you to Christ in the middle of that journey and will help you um, just know that it's not the end of the world and put your focus on things that are eternal. Um, and Waiting in Hope Ministries is an excellent resource. Like there's only so much that we can talk about on Hannah's Heart and we want to equip right. you with all the tools, but some of you may want further counseling or may want to join a support group to have something that's steady, like somebody that can speak into your life on a, on a really regular basis and, and actually be able to talk back. And so that is where Kelly's amazing ministry comes in. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm overjoyed to be here. Well, now you are a speaker, a writer, a teacher, um, and God has laid this topic on your heart um, for quite a while. And God has done this amazing thing for, through Waiting in Hope Ministries that I'm sure you never anticipated. So we want to launch into <laughs> your story, first of all. Um, let's talk about why, what led up to you starting this ministry and share a little bit about your personal story. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I mean... Let's be honest, it was completely the Lord, and I would have never asked for infertility or would have really even seen it coming, Mm -hmm. and it was just the vessel that got me to where the Lord was really leading. Um, You know, we needed that the heart journey that infertility took us on for myself personally, for our marriage, and it's always interesting when you look back and go, oh, I see what He was doing Mm -hmm. all along. But in those moments of the struggle and the depth, you're like, why am I here? Mm. And so it was really during our own personal journey. My husband and I struggled with infertility for over three years and quickly were sent to doctors um, because I had some other health issues prior. And so it was no surprise that we went on this fast track of um, testing and procedures and looking into things and trying and shots and all this stuff. And that led quickly to, you know, an endometriosis diagnosis Mm. and surgery for that and um, attempts at different treatments and several miscarriages and just roadblock after roadblock, but that the Lord was using to get us to pause or to wait or to start sharing our story. Um, It was during the first year of our infertility that we looked at each other and we were like, we've used everything in our lives but this. Mm. Like, this is the one Mm. thing we're holding so tightly to. And we've shared with a few people that we need to support us within our church and community. and um, so, But we hadn't shared beyond that. And as soon as the Lord pressed that on our hearts because we felt so alone, it was like, 
you guys know, it's like they're coming out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, yep. everyone has had an experience or knows someone who has. And it was like, oh, this is way more prominent. And I was so thankful for that because literally, like everyone else, I felt alone. And that's what I hear most from those women who are going through it in those first year is like, I didn't know that I wasn't the only one. Mm-hmm. And so when we um, realized that, I was like, okay, I went to my women's minister at our big local church, and I said, there's got to be something. And she said, there used to be, and there's a great need right now. And of course, I said those magic words of like, I'll help however is needed. <laughs> mm-hmm. God said, I, I see that became, hand. <laughs> yes, which then meant I became the co-leader. Um, and by God's grace, I actually knew the other one who had gone to her, and she was in our our young marrieds group, and we were like, oh my goodness, we're both going through this. How did we not know? And so we started leading women, like really just come and meet with us. Let's talk about this, and then let's find something purposeful to um, move forward in it. Like, let's not just stay here stuck mm, in our yeah. whining and in our grumbling and in our, our issues with it. And But let's find that commonality and that support with one another, but let's move forward towards hope. And it was probably several months into it that we came, I came up with this name and I was like, this just seemed like it was from the Lord. It was not something that just like came to my own um, plans or ideas. Mm. And and the thought behind it was that we wanted to wait and hope with the Lord and Mm. in the Lord, not for um, things to change and not or to be a mom, but to have more of him. And because Mm. ultimately that's what our hearts needed. And so, and that's what was going to sustain us. And so it was really based off of the verse that the Lord had given both my husband and I during our journey without realizing it of Psalm 22. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield in him. Our hearts, we trust um, in his unfailing love. Even now, as we put our hope in you, that was totally Mm. paraphrasing, but (laughs) that was really what we, you know, clung to and that like he was going to be the only shield. He was going to be our only help. And so we started having this support group and it grew and the Lord did many things that I would have never expected with it. And we ended up um, hosting an event and women came from all over. I'm in the Houston area, but women came from all over Texas and we were like, oh my goodness, these women and these couples, they really need support. And that's when that night it just like clicked in our heads and we're like, they need a group like this anywhere and everywhere. So then we came to realize that we needed to be a a support to the local body. How can we help churches to do this thing that we figured out how to do over the years and build curriculum for that the Lord helped us write? And how can we equip the church to then um, help these women and these couples who otherwise are going to really struggle and For most of them, it's the first really big struggle they've ever Mm -hmm. been through and can greatly affect their marriage and their life. And I mean, the statistics for divorce within um, those who face infertility is so much higher that it was like, we just thought that that was so vital for Mm -hmm. us to cling and to run towards. And so that's really what we've been doing for the last, I don't even know, 10 years, I believe now. It's incredible. And (laughs) So, yeah, and I mean, my journey had ups and downs. I have two sons um, now, and we are actually in the process of awaiting family for adoption. Amen. And, All right. Yeah, we, we thought we were going to do it before both of our sons. It was like something the Lord had called us to, but um, he had different plans. And so finally, we might hopefully get to do it. But, you know, that's its own journey of infertility mm-hmm. as well, just of the waiting. It's all come back again. and. I feel like the lessons I learned in the trenches of infertility have helped me so much in number one, parenting, and number two, with this now in, infertility journey of, of waiting to with hopes to adopt. So, What a beautiful story of the way God's continuing to write your story. And um, I love that he's including a chapter that has adoption because that's so close to his heart. And I'm sure a lot of the women mm-hmm. and men that you counsel, you're able to better relate to some of those problems and issues that come up with the just the frustrating wait <laughs> for adoption. And um, I love to the, just the title of your ministry um, that, that you do put the emphasis, not on the hope being for a physical child or for a thing, but your hope is in the Lord and right. pointing people to that. Um, I had an 
off radio interview with Kelly ahead of time to make oh. sure she wasn't cray cray. So you never I know. I don't think I am. <laughs> we let you <laughs> on the air, girl. Out. You passed the test with flying colors. <laughs> but one of the questions I asked her was, what do you what do you encourage women to put their hope in? Because that's in your title. And I loved your answer, Kelly. And just I think um you know, we want to prepare couples for whatever God's plan is for them in all the variety of ways. But knowing that whatever the plan is, whatever his answer is, um, there's joy and hope in that plan because it right. comes from a good God. Well, if if you could speak for uh, just a moment to, um, so you've started some support groups. Um, let's say a listener's listening right now and they're thinking, you know what? I'm dealing with this between me and God. It's it's pretty hard, but I don't, I don't know about a support group. Why do I need? Why do I need that? <laughs> what would you say to that person? Well, none of us want to do it, but we definitely need it. And there's this, like you were talking about between you two, like there's there's that encouragement, you know, where we it's, it's completely biblical, where we sharpen each other and we hold each other up and. Something that's really important, I think, for what we um, tell our Waiting Hope groups and our local leaders is that we really want you to to be able to grieve with those who grieve, Mm -hmm. mourn with those who mourn, and rejoice with those who rejoice. And so if we can learn how to do that in this smaller group setting, then it's so much easier when the outside world comes at us, you know, and those triggers come and, and we're not ready for to celebrate another family member becoming pregnant before us or or things like that. But when we've had this group who understands us, who sees us, who we're holding hands with and walking beside, and they're pointing us to Christ and they're pointing us to a better marriage, then it's so much easier to go through those like rough, hard patches because number one, we're not alone. And number two, like we have others to look at Mm -hmm. who are like, okay, you made it through that. (laughs) Or, um, you know, the, the, the only hard thing about having a group is that people will come in and be like, okay, so you guys all did this. Do I need to do that? And I'm like, no, 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 it's not a one size fits all. Mm-hmm. Like, right. This isn't, you know, a small, medium, and large. This is a, a Holy Spirit led your own path. And, yeah. and we don't get to dictate what that is. And God's going to show you something that's so much bigger than what you could ever imagine or dream because he is a good, loving God, but he also cares about you so personally that like he's writing this story just for you. And yes, it includes infertility, but sometimes it has to include infertility Mm -hmm. because we get in our own way and we make everything an idol in our lives and we choose all the wrong things because this broken world, (laughs) because this broken world pushes us to, and it's our human nature, but the Lord is like, I desire you. And so sometimes I found in my own journey, it was infertility that had me focus back on him and really realized he was the writer of my story and that he was the one in control Mm -hmm. and it wasn't my life to plan. And I get married at this age and then I'll have this many kids by this age. And we all fall into that, whether we're Christians or not, (laughs) you know? Yeah. I think infertility was like this house. Yes. Infertility was like the tool that God used to chisel this really ugly Mm. piece of flesh out of my life. And I don't know that any other tool would have completely worked to get Mm, that piece out of me. And I remember a day when I was praying in church and I actually thanked God, like, thank you for allowing me to go through this journey Mm -hmm. because of where it's brought me with you. Like it was worth it. Mm -hmm. It was a hundred percent worth it. And our mm, even so in, beautiful in mm. February of this year was a year since I've been able mm. to pray that prayer, and I just mm. was humbled, you know, because I have. I hate to say it, she is definitely an answer to our prayers about you know having a baby. We had a baby in January, and looking at her, I just can't believe it. Sometimes mm. you know that the Lord did answer those prayers in that way, but then we also have our answered prayer by the little boy in foster care in our mm. house. You know that we get to love on mm. as you know, mama and daddy to him. Um, but being able to say thank you, God, that I went through that because I would not be the same without it. You know, and I feel like we have to get to that point of being uh-huh. able to do that, and it's so hard to get to. And at one point, I never did think I would. <laughs> Yeah, but God um, doesn't waste pain. Uh-huh. He's no, like, if you're going to have not. pain, it's for a purpose. Right, right. And not that he causes it, but he allows it. Yeah. Well, Kelly, how uh-huh. can people um, connect with the support groups that you offer for your ministry? Or if, if there's not one that meets in yeah. their area, what options are available? 
Yeah, so we actually do church partnerships, and so um, we have online groups as well that are run by Waiting and Hope and our leaders. But we, um, and so anyone can join those. We have people from all over um, the country who are on those who don't have groups in their area. Um, but check out our website. There are definitely local groups throughout um, the country. And then, you know, pray and ask the Lord, talk to your church, see if this is something that you guys feel like you need to bring um, to your community. I mean, we train you, we give you the resources, the curriculum, um, and the ability to do it, because that's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. When the Lord called me to do this, I was like, now what are we doing? <laughs> like, And it was, trial, it was trial by error. So let us help you get past some of that trial by error, because church staff doesn't know how to do this as well. Most of them haven't been through it and they know it's a great need, but they're yeah. kind of lost at how to best go about that. And um, the Lord led us through um, what that would look like. You know, that we would need each other even while pregnant was a hard and a tricky one mm-hmm. that I had to learn personally while being um, pregnant and being yeah. and hearing the enemy's lies that like, okay, well now you're out of this. Yeah. And the Lord kept, bringing back to me that, no, that's fear. Mm -hmm. And I already was struggling with fear because I'd had so many miscarriages. And so if I didn't have that group Mm. to um, pray over me and to walk beside during that time, I probably would have been really isolated. And that fear would have come in even more because we know in darkness, the enemy loves to fill Mm -hmm. our brain with all of the lies um, that are not his truth. So are not God's truth, but well, and I love all three of us, like, in the middle of our struggles of infertility, have have ministries that God led us to do. And listener, let me just tell you, I can speak for Anne and Kelly. None of us are crazy, like, <laughs> experts at this. Nope. Like, we're just normal women who, like, were hurting and wanted to, you know, pour out. So maybe God is calling you to step up in your community. Right. And start and, one of these support groups. Yes. And yeah. I promise you, I thought that starting Hannah's Heart was going to be me pouring into other women. But just having these communities, I didn't expect to get ministered to so much right. by our listeners it's who hear weekly. this show. Yeah. Well, um, Kelly, how can they um, find your website? Yeah, it's www.waitinginhopeinfertility.com. And I mean, Google anything that says Waiting Hope Ministries or mm-hmm. and you'll find it. So. That's awesome. And you also have, you said, online support groups as well for people that don't have one in their area. Is that right? Yes. You know, thanks to COVID, we had to shift and change, <laughs> reevaluate. <laughs> And a lot of our groups couldn't meet anymore in person um, locally. And so we, thanks to Zoom, which if I would have known, I we've been using as a team for years. I'm like, oh, I should have gotten stuck in that. <laughs> we do online um, Zoom groups. And so those groups have certain times and days that they meet. Um, and so that's the beauty of what we now can do thanks to COVID. One of the nice things is yes. Well, so many people that maybe didn't have one in their area now have an option if they feel completely isolated and don't know anyone. Um, and yes. I, I mean, we have women in Guatemala who are serving in missions or California or Alaska. Oh, my goodness. the the I love being in that group with those women because they are from mm-hmm. everywhere, but yet they share um, the bond of Christ and they share the bond of like going through this mm-hmm. hard season that no one understands. And so it's yeah. been beautiful to see what God has done. And y'all do, if I'm remembering right, I got emails and continue to get emails from y'all um, to sign up. You can sign up for an email list and you will send emails yes. out as encouragement. Yes, okay. completely. And okay. um, that's, yeah, to sign up for the online group, you go through our website and you'll find um, join online or Okay. join our mailing list and you'll get information about that as well. Okay. So okay. encouraging. Now you've also developed some curriculum, which I am super excited about because one of them has Hannah as, as a <laughs> focus of your study, which we love her at Hannah's Art. Her. But um, tell us uh, over the last decade of having this ministry, God has led you to create kind of a curriculum to not only help women through infertility, but also to strengthen their relationships with Christ during this time. Mm-hmm. Tell me about some of those resources. Yeah, so our curriculum that's used through the groups is God ordained. I mean, we wrote one and then another, and then God led us to another, and it was like, oh, they all fit together in this perfect little puzzle that I would have never done. God is so sovereign to to do that and to put his big picture into the little pieces of our own lives, and this curriculum is no exception to that. And so um, first, it's very, like, topical because we're all just struggling with 
how do I get through the day to day? Like, mm-hmm. how do I get through these relevant topics of of the myths and of dealing with these relationships and things people say and um, my marriage issues? And so it's very personal. It's personal reflecting and also talking about the really practical aspects that we go through. And then um, the heart of Hannah um, is really about a study on her heart. Like you guys talk about exactly who you guys are and um, what you preach is, is that it was more about for the Lord. It was more about Hannah's heart. Mm. What was her desire for and who was she clinging and, and crying out to? And so that one is very heart focused and then prayer. So we kind of like lead into how they can start to pray again, because I don't know about you guys, but then infertility, I became prayer fatigued. Mm. It was like, I knew yes. all the things I needed to do. <laughs> I knew all the things I should be doing, but I didn't want to do any of them. Yeah. I was just so worn out. I felt like, I felt like Hannah just falling in the temple and, you know, at the feet of, of God and being like, you're going to have to do this because I got nothing. Mm. And, and so that one brings us back to, okay, the third study is we can pray. We can pray in our waiting and this is how we can do it. And so depth, bringing depth into a very practical aspect of our faith um, that becomes so beat down during this when it's just prayer after prayer for the same thing. But that's not what God wants for us. You know, like we can pray and we can ask for these things that we desire, but God wants such a, a, a more in-depth relationship. And, and that's how we get that is through prayer, through this conversation. And so... Yeah. It's really, it's one of my favorite studies because I feel like that's one of those things that even in the Christian culture that like we don't learn very well. Like we don't within the church teach how to really do this practically. It's like, yes, I hope you had your prayer time and <laughs> and I hope you had a quiet time. And, and instead of going, here are some real ways that you can do that from, yes. from your heart. And what that looks like in the battle of infertility and, and, and struggling for the intimacy with the Lord. So what I love which about works in any aspect of yes. life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. I love that you're not just helping women through one area of their life of struggling with infertility. Like you're giving them tools and you're discipling women to where, yes, it's through the lens of studying infertility and this problem that is right up close and personal in your life, but it's going to apply to mm-hmm. your spiritual life. The lessons that you learn through this curriculum are going to help you to be a kingdom warrior, whatever challenge is next that comes into your path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there will be more than infertility. Yes, completely. I mean, I had one after another after endearing infertility. And so it was like, if I hadn't learned those lessons mm-hmm. and dug in deep and God hadn't been so gracious to be like, Kelly, Kelly, do you trust me? Do you love me? Do you see that I'm here? Then I wouldn't have been ready for, you know, I had brain surgery and mm-hmm. had oh my goodness, house fires and I could go on and on. But the Lord prepared me for those things that I didn't know that were coming. And I hate that it took infertility, but I'm also like you guys talked about, I finally got to a pace of being thankful for the gifts it did bring. Mm-hmm. Um, but our fourth study is God is in our waiting, and it's really about the foundational aspects of who God is. Because our ultimate question is always, why God? Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. am I here? What is this about? And why do I have to go through this? Like, why me? <laughs> why me? And so that question is goes to the source of who we think God is. And so... We get back to really the foundational aspects of our faith, and and that's a really hard study, but it's so rich because Mm. it's ultimately what we have to come to. If we're ever going to be thankful for it, if we're ever going to be chiseled and allow the tool of infertility to really make us into who He wants us to be, well, then we need to know who He is. Right. And that gets really attacked during infertility. You know, the enemy slithers up just like He did at the garden. It's like, did He really say that? Mm. Is he really, does he really love you? Um, you've been forgotten, you know, and we hear those lies and it's like, no, that is not who God is, but it's what I hear because I'm hurting. Right. So, That's and then so our last one is, well, not our last one. We have two more. Fear of faith is just resting in God's faithfulness. So it's like, are we going to choose fear or are we going to choose faith mm. in this journey? And because it is a roller coaster, but there is this, um, ability to come out stronger from it. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and to have these, you know, like you were talking about, a warrior. Like infertility, I think we hear all the time and, and that fear of like, I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm a warrior in infertility. But it's so much more than that. Mm. Well, Kelly, this sounds incredible. Again, give us the website one more time so our listeners can connect with you. Yeah, waitingandhopeinfertility.com. Well, Lord, thank you so much for Kelly's ministry. We ask that you would bless it and that any couples listening, that you would inspire them um, to become equipped with the tools needed for you to work in their life and for them to have community. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for listening to Hannah's Heart. And Kelly, thank you for being on. It was so nice to talk to you. It was wonderful to get to talk to you ladies.